Hey, uh, VJ, thank you very much for that presentation. Uh, very informative. Uh, and I really appreciate everyone for participating and in, in creating, coming up with these panels. We do uh, want to open this up to a Q&A session from our viewers. Uh, they have been submitting questions and we've been compiling them in the background uh, for the during the presentations. But first of all, uh, did you guys want to say anything to each other? What, what, what do you think uh, uh, in terms of being part of different ecosystems, uh, you know, in observing each other's presentations? I mean, how does that play into effect when you're uh, you know, when all you have all these uh, amazing players out in the space kind of doing similar things. Um, maybe I'll go first. Um, I, I guess me, Arjun, and VJ, uh, in, in terms of how we structured our presentation, it was very, very complimentary, and it, you know, it, it really took um, everyone who's tuning in down the journey, right? I, I gave a more a brief but uh, introduction down the rabbit hole and DeFi, Arjun uh, took them way deeper into DeFi composability as well as Legos. And then VJ gave a very, very unique uh, kind of twist in terms of how he views it from his point of view in terms of institutions. Um, in, in terms of us doing different things, um, I think this is that's something that's needed, right? We, we're not, we, we might be heading down different paths, but at the end of the day, at the light end of the tunnel, it's all the same um, exit that we're heading for, where we're all working towards um, institutional, um, as well as real world adoption of DeFi, as well as the blockchain technology. Uh, feel, feel free to, to, to disagree with me, guys. Um, but I, I think that, you know, people need alternatives, right? Um, be it Ethereum or even um, Polygon or even Solana or anything, I think people need, to have that kind of choices and that kind of freedom to choose where they want to onboard, where they want to put their funds, as well as you know which protocol in their point of view um, hits home to them the most, right? And we are all here to be, to basically provide them with all these kind of alternatives and avenues for them to really, really choose um, to put their funds in, right? Um, yeah, so that's my personal thoughts. Yeah, no, I kind of agree with agree with Julian there, especially the fact that all of us are trying to solve the same problem. Like all of us are very passionate about blockchain technology. We want this technology to succeed. And then, you know, and 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 the future is going to be multi-chain. Uh, you know, people want alternatives. It's, it's, it's always a good thing. This is why cross-chain bridging nowadays has become such a hot topic because, you know, everybody's kind of accepted the fact that it's going to be multi-chain, the future. Um, and, and, and this is kind of also interesting that, that because so many different approaches exist towards solving the same problem, the probability of the problem getting solved is higher, right? So this is something we've seen in, in everything, whether it is, you know, the advent of electricity or whether it is the advent of the internet, when there are multiple approaches, then, then, then that's how the world converges towards what, what has to be like the best solution. So this is the best case scenario the fact that there are many different chains out there. All of them have great, amazing teams. All of them are building furiously uh, towards, you know, trying to get users. I, th I think this is the best case scenario for the blockchain ecosystem in general. Um, and then this will benefit the users the most. So I, I think I think I'm on board with, with that for sure. Um, and, and with respect to DeFi also being very interesting, because what we've seen is like again and again, the, the level of, let's say, malaise which is there in in financial ecosystems globally that that people the general populace deserve a better option uh, decentralized finance is is in my opinion the future because so many the current financial system is 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 so hedged towards benefiting a certain a certain class of people it is also so hedged with with you know with with so many entrenched players who are just not willing to give up control that something had to change and, and, and this is kind of where, you know, DeFi comes in and is trying to essentially take all of those different benefits and, and, and put that power and, and put those benefits in the hands of the community. And, and in my opinion, that this, this mission by itself is, is worthy enough that, you know, everybody should spend their time trying to solve this. So, so that's, that's why on the DeFi side, it's just so important that, you know, all of us sort of uh, try different things and present different options to users so that, you know, the best, um, so that the users benefit the most. So, so yeah, so those are some of my views on, on this. BJ, did you did you want to say anything uh, in terms of being a VC and uh, of course you know listening to these uh, you know yeah. different ecosystems? Yeah. yeah, definitely because you know uh, I see that you know a lot of people who are into crypto they are seeing things from the crypto angle only, but you know I've come I've 
have led like a lot of projects from startups to multi million dollar enterprises and I, i know their mindset their mindset is not easy to change we are talking about user what user feels like when you want to open a bank account right how do you open a bank account you or suppose you go to a different country new country all together and you want to open a bank account over there it's not easy you need to hire a lawyer or you need to hire a company secretary to do stuff for you right but within defi what if users get to know it's all about regulations if regulations are in place what user need to do he doesn't need to do just create a wallet and jump into the defi space just get some understanding and jump into the defi space that's it what he needs like i said he needs four things he needs internet he needs electricity he needs smartphone and he needs to make sure that what is what is defi just the definition of defi and the application he wants to jump into and like uh, arjun said multi chain and on chain like i deposit i deposit suppose i deposit 10 million dollar into jp morgan okay let's take an example so can i move that 10 million dollar and i've invested into different portfolio equity bonds commodities and all can i move that 10 million dollar very easily to goldman sachs no it will take me months to do that i have to liquidate either my portfolio or i have to transfer my portfolio to goldman sachs and then in order to do that there will be some portfolio also which i cannot transfer directly due to some regulatory restrictions but within defi what we can do like multi chain is there available i can immediately transfer my 10 million dollars from bsc to hobi to polygon or reverse so if multi chain on chain is available within defi it's far more simple far more easy to use efficient uh, transparent and secure than the traditional world for sure great uh well uh, with that said I, i wanted to open this up to some of the questions that are being put out there so Uh, let's start with this question. It is from uh, Chimdi. Uh, his question is on Arjun's presentation and the zk technology. Will the zk rollup enable in- inexperienced developers uh, to build on projects on their platform? Uh, he would like t- for you to throw more light on this. Um, sure, definitely. So I think I think zk technology is already out there. Like there are solutions, uh, there are zero knowledge uh, uh, solutions out there already, especially on the zk rollup side. I think. what would make develop what would make it right you know something which is um, where where you have you have uh, you know evm enabled zk right so and and what that would mean is that all of the existing code which we have within evm and all the all the ecosystem tools which the developers are used to they will be able to use the same same tooling but also be able to um, you know uh, use Use sort of uh, uh, the zk rollup technology. So, so the form of zk rollup also at Polygon. So, so yes, so it will be easy for developers. The the version we are looking to develop will be basically the same as Ethereum, and and all of the same tooling and all of the same let's say opcodes you are used to. You will be sort of using the same environment. So yes. Okay, great. Uh, next question is from Banshika, uh, and this question is to Julian. Uh, layer two clearly looks like the future, but how do we see future of DeFi in a highly specul- speculative market where one bad news makes things go south? I have trouble understanding market investors who sell so low. Bitcoin still marks a season for market bear or bull. Uh, did you um, understand that? <laughs> I, I I didn't I might not be able to get the last part. Um, but yeah. here's my interpretation in terms of the question that you asked. Um, multi-chain and layer twos are definitely um the, the way to go, right? Um, it it might be introduced and done in several ways. One of them is obviously uh, the the way the Polygon has been going about doing it. Um, but there's a couple of other ways. Um, it might not exactly be like a layer two. It could be like say side chains. Right, uh, and that's what some of the gaming five projects have already been doing, um, creating their own side chains um, as that kind of layer two. What what your main anchor actually sits on the layer one protocol, right? Um, with regards to the investment or the price speculation side of things that um, the user asked, um, personally for me, um, I don't really like to comment on in terms of the the price speculation of crypto assets. Um, for me, it's always a long term kind of thing, right? Um, if you ask me, I, I think the blockchain wall, um, as well as the cryptocurrencies that out there, out there, is very transparent as compared to traditional finance um, in terms of the, the the fiat money that they've been printing and all that kind of stuff. At least for on the crypto side, uh, if you're looking at 
um, the token itself, right? You will be able to see right away uh, from the code whether it has some sort of inflationary supply or a fixed supply, right? And if you're actually investing in a fixed supply, if you do honestly do believe in blockchain technology as well as the adoption of cryptocurrency and blockchain, like all of us here do, um, then for me, it, it doesn't really matter about selling even at, at the lowest or it, it doesn't really matter because every time someone sells low, um, is a dip that someone else is going to buy up, right? Um, and we, we're all looking at that. It, as, as the demand actually grows and the supply remains constant, then in, in the longer run of things, um, you know, the price is definitely going to go up if you're gonna, just looking at the price itself, right? Uh, for me, um, I'm a firm believer of crypto and all that kind of stuff. So um, when if Bitcoin goes down to 30,000, 20,000 again, I mean, it's, a, it's definitely a buy for me. So it doesn't really matter Um or I don't really try to understand uh, why do people sell. For me, it's just another buying opportunity. Yeah, no, that, that definitely makes sense. Uh, uh, so the next question uh, is from Derek K. It's for VJ. And the question is, Maple Block Capital has invested in multiple blockchain platforms like Algorand and Polkadot. What is your outlook on the future of various layer ones? Do you see multiple layer ones being successful in the future or just one or two of them emerging victorious? Yeah, of course. I think that's uh, it can't be one, right? If we we are talking about decentralization, we cannot say one blockchain will survive only or two blockchains will survive. We are talking about decentralization here, so there have to be multiple blockchains that coexist with each other, and we can transfer the tokens between one blockchain to another blockchain. Definitely, right? So, uh, and having said that, uh, having said that, when we invest in the in the project, it is not necessary. It has to be a layer one blockchain or layer two blockchain. It can be a long infrastructure project, or it can be a it can be a side chain, or it can be a small app, or it can be a small DApp also. It can be a wallet, Web3 project also, DAO ecosystem as well, which is growing, which is very good for the for the entire ecosystem. So it's not necessary the layer one blockchain, one or two blockchain will survive. There will be multiple blockchains, layer one blockchains, and on top of that, on top of that, there will be multiple layer two blockchains as well. And yes, we do invest in every area, every region, irrespective of the color. As long as founder is passionate, they know their reason, they are able to deliver what they are talking about, then definitely we invest. And we do invest how to one out of 20 projects that are able to pass through our due diligence, because which is very, very strict as of now. Great. Uh, by the way, uh, so I know that some people have been asking for the slides from the different uh, from the presentations. So afterwards, if you want to make your slides available, uh, that'd be great. I know that our community has been asking for them, um, but we, we can talk about that later. Um, the next question is for for I'll go down the list. Julian, uh, the it's, this is from Ezra B. Valentine. The question is: all, We all know that one of the issues of BSC is self custody. Self custody. Please, what are the measures that are being considered to solve this challenge? As we all know, many people who, th uh, who th through carelessness or accident lose their passphrases cannot recover it again. So what are the measures that BSC are trying to put in place to solve this? I think it's not just a, a matter of measures that BSC can actually put in place, right? Uh, I think it has to be a lot to do as well with the people that are providing these kind of wallets or uh, security um, kind of solutions um, to the end user on BSE, right? Um, in, in terms of the wallets, um, I think we have gone a really, really long way um, from, from just using, you know, cold storages, wallets, and, and now we have a lot more, we have multi-sig, and then, you know, we have that kind of cash rates. And I, I would assume that um, as time goes by, it gets easier and easier, right? Um, I think in 2016, 2017, uh, MetaMask was still a fairly new thing. And now, you know, you can keep all, all your crypto assets um, within your browser itself or within your computer, right? So that's one portion of things. Um, the second portion of things, obviously, um, through the blockchain, right? Um, from BSD perspective, we're definitely working um, with more kind of wallet providers like Trust Wallet, um, Taurus, um, Zerion, um, and that kind of stuff to actually try to ensure a really, really smooth experience for users to actually self-custody those assets, right? Um, I would say, you know, we might not have that kind of foolproof solutions um, where, you know, uh, <laughs> the cash phrase and all that kind of stuff could easily, easily be substituted with something else. Um, but I, I did come across several few projects that have started to look into like Gmail integrations, uh, single sign-ons, um, that kind of stuff to actually help to custody um, those 
um, funds, right? So I, I would say that in times to come, and I'm pretty sure that this solution that I was referring to is not just a plot, um, you know, um, building on BSC, right? They're building on Polygon, they're building on Solana. It's really for um, the entire blockchain ecosystem space, anyone who's using blockchain, right? So uh, I'm, what, I, what I can say is, you know, just be patient. Um, everyone's trying our best to be uh, to make the user's experience as smooth as possible. So um, just you, you just have to be patient. Great. Thank you. Uh, the next question is uh, for Arjun. And the question is from Li Wei Tan. Question, congrats on Polygon recently surpassing Ethereum's daily active addresses for the first time. Most of the people using Polygon are fairly tech savvy or quite deep into crypto, having to bridge over assets from ETH and setting up their MetaMask, et cetera. My question is, in the future, do you foresee it possible for the everyday person to easily DeFi or swap on Polygon without requiring all the steps that are currently required? Oh, great question. Uh, and, and, and I did, uh, you know, and, and, and this is definitely something which, which is so important to, uh, to enable like mass adoption of DeFi. So what you've done at Polygon is that number one is you've tied up with lots of different fiat on ramp, uh, solution providers. So there is, you can use a buyer, you can use Moonpay, uh, you can use simplex and, and, and there are a few other, um, fiat on ramps where you can easily get crypto directly onto Polygon. Secondly, we also have a lot of in many integrations with centralized exchanges. In fact, one with Binance as well, where you can uh, take Matic tokens from Binance to Polygon. You can also uh, take other assets from exchanges like Ascendex, KuCoin, um, and, and, and from many other centralized exchanges, you can take assets directly onto Polygon. So we we've, we've tried so we are trying and and to solve like this sort of problem so that it becomes easy for the average user to use uh, let's say DeFi on Polygon. We also have integrations with many uh, let's say very popular wallets as well. So for example, Trust Wallet, which has one of the largest communities, is integrated into Polygon, and you can access uh, DeFi from uh, from Trust Wallet. So so we are building these integrations to make it easy for users. I think the next step for us would be to build, like put lots more information out there and then create many guides so that it becomes easy for people to navigate the DeFi ecosystem. So, so there's several things we're doing and, you know, I encourage you to look into these different options. So, yeah. Great. Uh, thank you. Uh, the next question is for VJ. It goes, it's from Evans Uba. And his question is one setback with decentralized finance solutions is on off fiat solutions. What ways do you think this can be bridged? So right now, if we see, uh, like I mentioned in my presentation also, the fiat money comes into the centralized exchange, like I do, how I do it, do it myself. I put it into the centralized exchange. I convert into a crypto coin, US, either the stable coin or crypto coin, right? And then I invest as a VC, right? Or, or I have third party integrations who converts it on my behalf and I do it. So right now there is, the, I don't see uh, that, you know, first of all, there is a limit. Right, if you're licensed authority from US or somewhere like Manis, US is a license exchange, you have the limits, right? You know, you cannot have you cannot accept a million dollars, you cannot accept 10 million dollars or 10 million dollars straight away, and then you say that I want to buy the cryptocurrency. So there are limits right now. So this, this limits will be imposed off as and when when we see there are more regulations coming into the market or less volatility, or there are more reasons to justify the valuations of various technologies we have in the market right now. So, uh, yeah, having said that, I feel uh, it, we are not near to that, but it's going to happen for sure. And it will, it will only happen when uh, the governments will start giving uh, more crypto licenses. But you can do it in specific countries like Indonesia. You can have access to IDR, Indonesian Rupiah, which is a fiat currency. In Dubai, you can have access to Diram, AED, right? In India, you would be able to, you have access to INR already, like Pazirax is acquired by Banas. They, so they do have... Uh, access over there right so in similar few current few countries you have that access but if you tell me that within the same platform euro gb euro gbp usd inr idr everything should be there that is only possible through third party integrations which polygon is doing like moonpay and all but if you say that there has to be uh, there has to be such platform to do that within the defined crypto ecosystem for that regulation has to be very clear which is not yet there so that will still take three four more years i think two three years at least that to happen. Great, thank you. Uh, the next question is for Julian. Uh, the question is from Tape Tapeset. Most of the NFT and DeFi projects with farming and mining concepts 
are sometimes unsustainable as they have no intrinsic token value that benefits users in the long run. Can guarantee profits for its users have a high token value and can be used in the long term until later? Um, I think it really, really boils down to the individual projects kind of tokenomics, right? Um, a lot of these, uh, if we're talking about GameFi, um, there's a lot of projects that I've come across um, that are actually building their games, um, not just on BSC, right? Some of them are in Ethereum. Uh, I, I'm sure Arjun with Polygon, you've seen your fair share as well. Um, uh, some of these projects, they, a lot of them come from the traditional kind of game developer kind of background. Right. A lot of them don't have any much experience um, in designing those kind of tokenomics, right? And it, I mean, if you look at X Infinity, even for them, they paid Delphi Digital a lot of money to actually, you know, properly work on those tokenomics, right? So for, for these projects that actually come in, do great games um, and do not put in much thought into the tokenomics, what will happen is that they might grow too big too fast. Um, the token price goes up because a, a lot of people are buying them uh, to, to use and play, play the game. And then, you know, one day, either because of several issues, it could be gas fees or it could be unsustainable tokenomics in terms of the rewards mechanism or the token supply, um, et cetera. But a lot of times what I've seen is that these projects end up with um, unsustainable kind of ecosystem. And what happens after that would be, um, you know, the token prices capitulate on the open market, right? So I think tokenomics is definitely something that all these game five projects or anyone that's looking to invest in such kind of projects, whether it's DeFi, game five and all that, you would have to really, really look as far as understand the tokenomics, right? Understand um, the utility of the token. Um, most of the time, if the utility is too good to be true, uh, you, you probably might want to think twice, right? Um, and why I say that is because obviously, you know, this is a fairly new kind of um, field that we're, we are venturing into. Um, a lot of times, um, if, you, if you look what happened recently with Safer, um, a lot of new tokenomics kind of concept is coming up, right? And a lot of times these people, these new projects, when they come up with a brand new tokenomics, a lot of people do not understand, right? So I, I would say if it's too good to be true, think twice, but yes, the answer to your question is that I do think that there are a lot of projects out there that have really, really good um, tokenomics as well as economies, right? And what that usually transcends um, into the token value is that um, when you have a really, really good sustainable um, as well as efficient kind of um, token economy, it would eventually translate into um, the token price, right? So it's like no difference from buying a stock or anything, right? You really, really have to understand the background, what the company is doing, uh, and um, that kind of stuff before you actually make um, your investment decision. Yeah. Great, Julian, thank you. And finally, uh, you know, we keep going on all day, but uh, I'm gonna wrap this up as <laughs> the last question. Uh, last question goes to Arjun, it's from Jazz. The number of projects in free to play NFT and gaming on blockchain has seen sudden surge. We see Polygon in support of this re revolution. Can you comment what it might mean for overall growth of DeFi industry? So I think, uh, so, so one thing which is very unique about, um, about NFT or rather two things, right? So but two things which are very unique about NFT and gaming are number one, that they are attracting a lot of users to, to blockchain technology who, who would otherwise do not fit the profile. Right. So a lot of artists, a lot of people who are not necessarily into technology are now discovering and reading about blockchain technology. So, so NFTs have this interesting power to attract a very different kind of demographic. And similarly, gaming, and, and one of the reasons why we also are very bullish on gaming is because gaming has this power to, again, get tens of thousands of new users into blockchain. And all of these users, the moment they're into blockchain technology, they're playing, let's say, you know, you're playing Axie, right? You're earning SLP tokens. Now you want to figure out what you want to do with them. Right. And, and this is kind of where the discovery starts. So even people who may not be typically, let's say, um, like, let's say DeFi users would, would, would then end up discovering DeFi. And I think that is why NFT and gaming is very interesting for me because it has that potential to get in those, uh, the, those user groups into blockchain technology. And, and this would eventually help sort of DeFi uh, grow even further. Right. And would add like new kinds of or, and new users and new dimensions to DeFi. So that's, that's, I think, where NFT and gaming plays like a very interesting role. Yeah.
I think Kevin is not there. Yeah, it, it seems like Kevin dropped off. Yeah, hello everyone. Um, I think um, Kevin is having a little bit of some internet challenges. Yeah, but thank you. Thanks, Julian. Um, thanks, um, Arjun. Thanks, VJ. I mean, um, I'm really, really excited to have like everyone here. Like it was, it was a great, great honor to have everybody. I mean, <laughs> when we were trying to think about this, it was almost impossible, you know, trying to get these very big platforms all on one stage, you know, to just um, share their ideas, share their thoughts. But it was really, really amazing to have everyone here. Super excited uh, for what the future holds for DeFi and also for how, you know, we can bring the regular individuals right into the DeFi ecosystem. Super excited. And thank you very much for making our time for us today. And um, also thanking the audience, you know, the people that asked very brilliant questions. In fact, I had to take notes, you know, because we have at every point in time, being a builder, we always try to listen to what people say try to see their pain points and try to constantly develop, you know, solutions that really meet their needs. And um, I'm super excited. I learned a lot today. And yeah, I'm very happy to have all of you. So thank you very much. Okay, I think Kevin is back. But yeah, thank you very much, everyone. Um, I think we'll um, call it a day. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Hey, everyone. I just want to say thanks a lot for uh, everything today. So follow, uh, if you're still out there watching, follow us on uh, our, our Telegram or on, on our Twitter at Zen Finance, and uh, we will have those presentations for you. You just have to make sure that Julian and Arjun and, and BJ on the spot, but uh, a lot of people are want to see those presentations. So uh, we will be, uh, I'll, I'll clear it with them. And then once we have them, uh, we can present them to you if they're willing to share that with, with everyone else. But thank you again for joining us, how to build bridge uh, real world solutions with DeFi. And uh, we'll see you for the next panel session. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you, Zen. Thanks. Thank you, Hugo, for having us. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having us. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thank you very much. Bye.